Uh, I'm going to introduce, or we've just introduced our, our speaker, and I'm going to turn the time over to him. Hey, I'd like to go ahead and introduce myself again. Even though you probably already know me, but shit, Toto Kojit in the Enschle, Ado Totsoni, Bashish Chain, Patnes Zani, Dash Che, Do, Tanji Kin, Dash Nalle, Ako Yat E, Le Tehili, Don Le Ron Rock, the Cut Band, as well. I'm um, zooming out to all of you. So Yat E, who's all listening out there and Last week I thought I started this presentation on Navajo Astronomy 101. And just right before I started, I said, this unit, this topic, it's 46 hours to do. That's the estimated time. So we started last week about the, the emergence into the fourth world. And this is basically through Navajo oral history. And this is just broad information to learn. And um, a lot of the content, a lot of the other stories would relate to different ceremonies. But um, this one is just the story of the emergence, the, the coyote and the hashishin. So we've been talking about this, the creation, the first one that was made, put in place was the kahuna the and sun and the moon. And then, you know, conversation, doing certain things about how the creation was going to be around the Mother Earth, feet, body, arms, and facial inside the, the body, what would make the Mother Earth, and also the sky, too. So... The Hashishin was there, the first man, the first woman, Coyote was there, and all these um, holy people, you know, the, the creation of the universe. And then uh, it was decided that it would be perfect. So all the constellations were all thought out and be placed into the night skies. And then it will all be related to calendar months. And um, there will be four seasons. And each of these four seasons will be four, no, four seasons with three months in those months, 12 all together. Nahitazit is what it will be called. And then over here in the summertime, you go, hey, it will be extended sometime. It will be the 13th month will fall onto the summertime. It will be in addition to that to make it 13 month. The spider month. It will fall in there. Other if it were to fall on the winter side, the longer winter months will be one will be put in there to make that the thirteenth month. would apply to that. So this doesn't happen all the time. Every four years, it will shift like this. So sometimes it's a longer month, and then it will be a longer summertime. So that explains the 13th month. A long time ago, um, our people, 
Navajos, they look at the night sky all the time, and they would look at the stars, the constellation, the moon, different different position. If the moon was sitting like this at the crescent at the first quarter, that means it's holding water. If it's like this, it will be like a ladle. It's, the water is running off. That means no rain. If it was holding water, it would be a, the month will be, have plenty of rain. So if it was really skinny, really narrow, the first quarter, the first night, that first quarter, then it will be cold. So that determines the weather, what determine the weather. So all these constellations would be in the night sky. So as you see, there are many, there are plenty of them. And every, every one of them were placed in there by seasons, by months in the night sky. It took a lot of work, many discussions. Was right here. As you see the, the diagram here, there's three boys. All together, there's six boys. And then the mother right there. There's the one story. Of course, there's another story. And then another story. So, so let's say that, for example, there were nine people going along like this, and all of a sudden, the two, they committed incest with the immediate family here. So then these two were told to go over there. So they separated. They became so So now there's only seven. So in there, there's a teaching about that. There's a, a story about incest, clan, relation. So not supposed to happen. Not supposed to do that. Another version is the the story about the changing bear maiden uh, and Eto. She had brothers, and after the brothers was accused of killing her husband, then she went out and started killing her brothers. And there were seven of them, and she killed every one of them except for one, the one that survived. So that's another story like that. The other one too is about winter ceremony, Yeibiche, called it night week. The, the six dancers and then the patient or the practitioner. So they will come in early as October in the night sky. We'll see it around about 10 o'clock in the evening. And then every morning would disappear around about two o'clock in the morning and all the way till around about March, April, then it will disappear in the night sky. So if there was a ceremony that happened in November, that ceremony is still going on the all the way till March, then it, the ceremony will be complete. All the prayers are still going. The songs are still going in the night sky. They're still going. So, it's very, uh, when you listen to these stories, it makes sense a lot of time to listen to the elders tell the story in, in their own language the expressions that's made like that. And they would like that gesture and then they would use their voice. You say like that to you. And then the next one, the slim one. It will be like a leader, a hunter, a provider. 
So A, your A will be up there in the night sky in the southern area. There has to be somebody that rises with the early morning that says, Get up, get up, let's go to work, let's get busy. That type of a person to make it known down the valley that everybody has a responsibility to do. So that type of a, a individual will be in the night sky as a reminder to everybody. So it's always up there too. Auto the next one, Nikki, a ya e has ti sek ay e to the man with the feet a jord or sezigo, just like the way in the picture. But he's pointing to the earth. He will stand like this and pointing to the earth, pointing down to the earth, and then going like that. Like that poured into the earth, and it says it's right there, pointing back into the earth. Always know where everything at. Hard to shut. It's right there. Lost things. It's right there. Gahat in the nana either rabbit tracks. It's over here on the south side too. Put the gahat in the other has tea sick. I don't set it so. I don't that it has um, I said it's a quiet case in it. Gahat in the key a ya to make a pathway for guidance an indicator for hunting season. It's a footprint. Sometimes when you see it in the winter time, rabbit makes their tracks on the ground. It, it, they look like that, the one that you see in, in, in the picture. I don't know how to do it. The North Star, the male and female revolving this way. Oh, uh, in uh, na they call it naho kons. It rotates like that. So there's a fire up there. There's fire, and they're protecting the fire there. It's like the first man, the first woman at home in this whole galaxy, in this whole universe. They're maintaining that fire quite again. And they don't go anywhere. They stay home all the time. They take care of everything that's here in this universe. So then your chimney hole is right there, right in the center of a hoka, that fire that burns inside your home. And then it goes way into the center of the earth. There's a fire that burns way down there in the in the in the earth, no sun get the out of that sunlight. When the sun rises in the morning, that door opening, that sunlight comes in into hit that fireplace inside your home. They all connect to the north star, the fire inside your home, the sunlight, and then all the way down to the earth, and they all kind of like adjust. Let's say like. If the Hogan doorway is over to the south, that means it's a winter home. If the doorway to the of the Hogan is facing a little bit to the north this way, then it's going to be a, a summer home. If the doorway is right in the center, the vernal equinox and fall will be in there. The March and then September 22nd, March the 22nd will be over here. Way over here is June the 22nd. Way over here is December 22nd. So then people have their summer home, spring home, fall home, and then their winter home. So eh, they will all be aligned. So the whole gun would be as a, an indicator 
of time and space. So that light comes into the sunlight comes into the whole gun. If it's if the spotlight, the sunlight is right close to the fire, that means it's it's summertime. If it's if the sunlight, that spot sunlight is on the wall, that means it's winter. It's right there between the the summer and then the winter. That means it's spring or fall. So that's time, space. The sun, the moon, like I said, the one of them is in charge of death, the other one is in charge of dying. And then the moon cycle, it takes care of the birth. You have a birth date. That's what be your sign. Add on the and child rearing discipline of the mind for a younger generation. Just like in this drawing, they always have something for development. Lifestyle like baby, adolescent, adult, and old age. For a young individual that's male, then you rely on the Naho Kospakam. And a little boy would raise, be raised, be told by this to follow that. Look at the sky. You follow this order. If it's if she's a female, then Naho Kuspa Adi Atse Ats Oze Atse Atso Ado Yikaistaha E Diki the Milky Way it will be her guidance. As we I mentioned these single stars up there. They're just one stars up there. They're indicators too. What is it? So just one star right here, other one over here. Like I said, some of these stars are like five out of seven and 13. You count them like this. And then the constellation, when that month was being completed, that was the first the mud that was made at the time of the emergence. This is where the summertime and the fall time will come together like white and yellow. Yellow will be at the bottom and then the white will be at the bottom. The light will be something like that. They will met together. Come together like that. There will be place in there to represent mutt. When the mutt was completed, they put a constellation right there. So um, October would be the when. The uh, appeared in the night sky. That means it's time for a winter ceremony. That will always mean that it's going to be like the latter part of October. So it takes a long time for them to get prepared. So right at that's when the first ceremony would be starting. Let's say like in English, November, December, January. Out of February, March. February, that's where the cutoff time for 
winter ceremony, quote unquote, Asia. After right about the end of February, March, a thunder light will come back. Okay, as you look at these charts again, heat algo inko. So Kochiki Eya, this is the Western version. I guess you could say that. And another perspective. Oko Koji Eya Navajos, a teat of the Yoskatla. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen stars in that to make that Naho course. Auto Koji Eya, one, Two, three, four, five. Naho cons, but ad, naho cons, So, this is your chimney hole. Right here is your, your fire at the middle of your, of your hogan. Right at the North Pole. Okay, could you eat your eight D, the A, your A has he said, right here? Could you get a your A at set so? So when you look at it, there are only four, four stars here. A, your A has he said, could you non the A, your A, or Nana Snell? This is the Navajo counting stars. Could you get up? It's up in the night sky. It more or less they counted. The next one, it the Yikaistaha. People they say the Milky Way. Yikaistaha. Navajo Jukwa it they draw like this a symbol. Kahat any so so quite the this is Venus. D D so so Ara Kojuko e ya e on a a bigger picture like on a sheet or on a sand painting of the night sky, then this will be the sun, the moon here. Out of this will all be these dots that I'm talking about. All of these will make the constellation by mat all the way around. And altogether there will be 12 different constellations full body with the leg, arms, and the head, and what they're having in their hand, all of that. Ado Kojinda, it would look like this, this one right here, the last slide that I showed you. This one right here, this one right here, and this one would be like this. Over here is the earth, if you saw it in 3D, the earth is down at the bottom and then the sky would overlap right here. See? The sun would be over here, the moon would be over here, and then this is the night sky. This is Yatishil as a male. This is the mother earth as a female. And they have their tobacco and their facial. Over here will be colors on the face over here will be colors over here so this is the pleadies so remember it says three three six and seven the never whole way of making what well, this this is the line over here, but Kojiko it it looks like this. It's it's as a quite a nana in the night sky. Like I was sharing with you last week, and last week I was talking about when we used to be at Sehili at one time. We would take um go up go outside with the students and take our students outside and in the winter time and see the night sky. We have to get away from the campus. There's too much light pollution. So you have to go into a, where there's no light, dark 
place so that you could see the full night sky. So you can count these stars. It's best to do that in the winter instead of during the summertime. The mountains and the Hokan, di de nan, just to show you a diagram, east, south, west, and north. That doesn't jive, though. To say east, south, west, and north don't mean anything to a Navajo. You have to say ha a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a it, it, it goes like that. It goes around. This is where the coyote began to be impatient. At first, he was running back and forth. He had no patience. Like he was going somewhere. He said, hurry up, you know. And people were talking about all these consolation one at a time and fixing all of these consolation and putting it up there in the night sky, polishing it, lighting it up, and putting it up there. But it's taking a long time for the coyote. Yeah, it's a long process. I don't know what you guys are doing, but it's taking a long time. He kept going outside working with the dot so. And the dot so would be listening for him. And every time he, the coyote went outside, then the big fly would tell the coyote, hey, they're talking about you in there. And every time the coyote left, and then uh, the first man and these other people in there would say, what's bugging him there's talking about you like this so when he come back he already knew what people were saying there's always one in the crowd the one that's the title tale very impatient coyote so the coyote this is the fire so and then they gave him one chance. They said, okay, Coyote put one up there. And he grabbed that one motless star. He polished it up right before he named it. He polished it and then he lit it up, fired it up, and then he ran over there and put two of them up there. Uh, there's always going to be a conflict. There's always going to be a disagreement. So, what's that all this? So, the coyote couldn't even settle down. The hashesh felt worry. They were, they were all sitting down. There was that big old skin on the ground, all the crystals were on there, all, everything. Coyote was running, walking around, and somewhere in there, a, 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 he grabbed that butt skin, and then he just grabbed that butt skin and then shook it like this, oh, you can deal with oh, so oya ye gaz dosh ate ejeleta no ya lato hatashi is taking too much time just do this no so all those crystals yeah they just lit up and then they just pop up into the car in the sky so ebony na they say that a lot of these stars up there they have no names So when the butt skin came back down to the ground, and there were these light crystals still on the blanket, the teas were small particles. And then the Hashesh walked to that place and then he stood.
stop his feet like that one time. And then the crystal landed on the top of his feet here. And then he stopped his feet again. The crystal got on his knees right here. And he did it again, stopped his feet again. It got on his belly right here. And then he did it again, got on his shoulder. Here. And one time it landed right there on his forehead, on his temple right here. So those are the indicator. So the hash eshin, this is the sun and the moon. This is the crescent moon. This is the earth, and this is the Pleiades. They call them Hashishin. Literally translated, they call them the Black God or the Fire God, which doesn't make sense, but in Navajo terms, we call Hashishin. Hashishin, the night sky. There's a fire in the sky. There's a fire in this earth, Nasambakai. There's fire on this. We make fire. Lightning makes fire. A rock crystal makes fire. There is a way to make fire. So the earth is a female the sky is a male being with all the body parts embedded so they say that the earth has a heartbeat the sky has a heartbeat it's conscious it sees and it's in perfect form the way it's all put in place. That is the natural law. They fixed it like that. You follow that. Nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to live forever in this world. But then if you try to manipulate it, if you try to make it, how you like it, then there's going to be consequences. There's going to be water. There's going to be rain. There's going to be drought. There's going to be something. You're trying to manipulate that. So you're making that out of order. You're going to destroy yourself. The coyote settled down. But his curiosity always makes sense to see what is negative and see what is positive, what is all right, what is balanced, what is not balanced, to come to see where this is a safe place right here. This way is dangerous, that way is dangerous. But right here is what you can go and live by. And right here, this, just imagine, this is where we are. And this is the sun. And everything that's in the universe is like this. And the most powerful energy in this whole universe is the sun. The sun does not go on break. The sun does not go on vacation. And in this galaxy, in this universe, there is no other sun. But way past when you leave this galaxy, there's another earth, there's another sun. Millions and billions and trillions of suns they call stars but mars is not a star it is a planetarian or that's what a coyote threw up into the air 
Adler. So you see this in Navajo ceremonies, healing ceremonies. So a long time ago, in here in the Southwest, these people of ours, our clan, our grandfather's, grandfather's clan way back, they lived this life. They believe in the universe, the natural order, the natural cosmic order of life. They follow that. That's their belief. No, they don't believe in other human beings. Even Hashche Yachke follow that. Even Hashche Wan follow the, the stars, the moon, the sun, the seasons. Even great philosophers, they have to look at the sun, the moon, the stars, time. And it's still like that too. It tells you when to plant your corn, wherever you live, wherever you may be. And it tells you when to harvest. It tells you when to get ready for, it's going to be cold, it's going to be hot. Even animals, they follow that. One time there was a, a solar eclipse in the summertime. And this was like 1970 something, about 1978, around that time. And we were over there. My father was looking outside. And then he said, look, it's all quiet. And then he said, look on the ground. There's no ants. Look, those sheep are just, they just bowed their head. I think they they had their eyes closed. Look at, there's no birds flying. It's quiet, it's still. Everybody is in reverence. So. It's seven o'clock. So then we went to the Hokan and then we sat around in there. He put the water right there and then he took out a corn pollen and then he, consecrated all the four sides of the whole gun. He sat back down and then he passed the Tadithin. He said, it's all right to take Tadithin at this time. And then he started to sing the creation of the sun. And um, it sounded like something. Yes. <laughs> It sounded like that. And then the word, and of course, the creation of the sun and the moon. So to sing it back to life, even though it's eclipse. But just imagine if we were to be without the sun, there would be no life. Everything would just fall off the, into, into the black hole or somewhere. The whole universe would just fall somewhere. Just, in, just imagine there's no moon. Everything would not work. Everything would just Go chaos in the whole universe. We, we wouldn't even be alive. Everything's going to die. So they, they used to sing their songs to bring him back to life, saying that we need you. We rely on you. Come back to life. That's the way they, they, they used to be like that, our, our people. 
or like that, the Gogo. And they were, they knew what was happening up there. They did not need to look at it. it they already knew what's up there without looking at it. But they tell you, don't you, don't look at it. They told us that if you look at it, you're going to hurt your eyes. It's, it's happening now. Uh, no, it's just what they used to say, like that. So the, the universe, astronomy, it's very important. So like we have changed so much. We have been assimilated, acculturated, and we lost through our belief through colonization as Indian people and kind of like this type of a understanding that um, people call it brainwashed. We change into another frame of mind and we really don't understand our old ancient ways. So we have a, a watch that's on our wrist and we see the calendar on our desk. And we have a alarm clock to tell us what, what time to wake up. But we never bother to meet the early dawn. Or we never, we, we never look at our shadow when it's up, full moon or noon. Our shadow is standing right next to us. Other when we face west, the sunlight is hitting our face. So our shadow is behind us. In the morning, our shadow is behind us. Or in the morning, the shadow is in front of us. So that's our companion. We become different like that. Johnny Hichedoni Masan, like I said, they always look at the night sky, the sunlight, and they knew what was going to happen, what was out there in our environment. And then also, there's all many questions about how about aliens? Are they out in the universe? Our great forefathers, they said, yes. There's something that some, some people, they come around, star people, they check on us. They make sure that we are okay. We are all right. And just believe it like that because they're there. They told us like that. So we have to begin to understand that, you know, there's something out there and they came here, they gave us something and then they left and they're up there and they put it this way. That's where they come out from. It's not this other way or it's other way. Is to the north star and beyond it. That's what they said. It has a lot to do with the way that we live on earth. So it's related to everything that's in the cosmic order and all the plants that grow and everything. Again, look, all the color that we see in this on this earth, it comes directly from the sunlight. So we never bother to say thank you to the sun, to the moon, to the stars. So, and um, like I said before, this is really a lot. So, 
From the time that you are born to live to be 102 years old or beyond that, you follow this life and you're going to live that long. All your brothers and sisters will, if you're going to outlive them, you're going to outlive them. Your father, your mother, you're going to outlive them. But the son, the son's going to be there from the time that you were born. If you live to be 100 years old, the sun is going to be there. The moon will be there to see to your full life. And then there's a lot of question about, is there a heaven? Yeah, see, right there, heaven. But here, there's only one Nasan where human beings live here. So, but where are you going to go in this whole universe? You go back into your body. You lost your mother. You go back into your into your body. You lost your father. They go back into your into your body. Your che go back into your body. Your another goes back into your body. That's why we have four clans. You lost all your relative, your brother, your mother, father, Che, and your nala, but you say, they're still alive inside of you. That's where they go back to inside of you. They still walk with you like that. They could even not take care of your life, take care of yourself, eat properly, and live a long time. So, La. I don't I, I just like looking into a Hogan, a Navajo traditional Navajo Hogan. If you were to walk in there and sit way on the west side and lean against the wall on the dirt ground, sit there and look to the east and Look around in there, that space, the fire is burning, that will be the sun. Right in the, in the center of the whole gun, that's the sun. And right here where you're sitting on your left side, that's going to be the first month, October, late November, December, January, March. March will be right there, the doorway will be between the March the 22nd is going to be the, the open the doorway. And then you go back over here to June. June the 22nd will be the south cardinal direction. June 22nd. September 22nd, that will be your fall solstice. All the way back to October over here. December 22nd will be to the north over here. That's going to be your north direction. Your east, west, south, and the north direction. And then if you look into the ceiling of this hoka, you can actually look through the season and see the stars. The sunlight is going to come shine into this hoka. Oh God, look to see the, the ceiling of the Hogan. There are these mutts at those corners. That's where these stars are. If you're sitting in the Hogan in the winter time, then the constellations are there. If you're sitting in the Hogan in the summertime, then the constellations are there in the summertime, in the ceiling. So, and then every time you get up 
to make your first step, second, third, and then you walk out, and then you come in back in. That's time, life, time. Every breath you make is time. That's how we live our life. So, and then you always have to understand that there is always that traditional law of the holy people. They follow that. We as human beings, we have a law that's called customary law. We have to follow that. We have to take care of our body and mind and soul and spirit like that. Here in this universe, in this time. So you live in a, a world and this is it. There is no other place like this in the whole universe. This is heaven. You live here, you walk here, you eat here. You're supposed to make the best of it. Live a good life. That's the teaching. That's the philosophy. That's the Sa'an Arabic to take care of yourself. Four. Arabic is the epitome of what you're trying to be, become, and live a good life in this world, in this universe. This is it. Maybe have, you have only one turn, one chance to live this life. After 100 years, eh, it's going to be all be. You have lived it the best way you, you lived it. Eh, you lived to the fullest. You enjoyed your life. But, eh, la, all right, let's say like, what if there was a heaven way up there somewhere? If you went over there and then you're over there, like you're, you'll get all bored and say, ah, I want to be born again over there in the earth. I want to be born again. I want to live again way over there. Can I go back over there and be born again and live that? This, this life again, all the way from, from childbirth, all the way to the 100 years again. Yes, you may. If you were to give him be another chance, we'll be here to live here, not way out there somewhere. That's the teaching of our people. And right here is the Big Dipper, spring, summer, fall, and winter. I got this off the internet. Somebody sent it to me, and I decided to use this. And um, and some of these uh, illustration that I posted on Facebook or on this presentation, these ones like this. These are my grandfather's sketches. These are my grandfather's notes. Like. Uh, Right here, this is my father's drawing on the right side. My grandfather's drawing. These are from a sheet. And these ones too are from a sand painting that was made on this one too, not Oya Bakache. And I still have those pictures. Like that. So, and every indigenous nations out there, Joe, everybody, every culture, they have a story to tell about the universe. Yes. 
So I guess you can look into a microscope and look at a, a tiny star way over there and try to study it. But a, an elder would say, see what I told you. See, netish ne. And you didn't believe me, now you believe me. I could, oh, a, 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 lead like a cobra, so, and, um, so look at the night sky. Look at, look at the moon, it's bright this year. Yeah. Look at the weather, it's cold. This G got kiniki. It just happened today and yesterday. So it's kind of late. So So this is where we at in this time and in this space right here. At Hokati Hojishiki right now, the universe right here, where the sun, the moon, the stars, that's where we at. Not by the date or the time, but in this universe. Another dose is quite a another month and two. It will be time to do a blessing way for George prayer needs to be done. We need to give offering to the sun, the air, to the water, and then to the earth because we, we have to give back. So that it has a cycle. And we can't take all of it. We have to save some of it for our children and grandchildren and our great great grandchildren to use and live. So we have to give it back. So we have to pray. Pray. So that's the way to live in this universe. So I would like to say thank you to all of you for listening to me at this time again. And um, it's all about sharing. So it's not about being popular. It's not being about, I want to make a lot of money with it. No, it's sharing. So, so this presentation, I learned from my father, my mother, my hatafi, my teja hatafi, dan lindiki, my che, she che, e e bitsado, hane egit ako. And I learned it when I was, I was growing up, and I've shared it with you. So you can't really say it like that, but I can say that because that's true. Right now, today, there's no elders. You can't say that I learned it from my che or I learned it from my father because we don't have it no more here. Some places they have it, but not, not all everywhere. So it's very important to learn it, keep it to yourself, and share it with your children, yes. And even though it's public domain, but still there's that, you know, intellectual property that a lot of these information or that comes from the heart and the mind, it's not for sale. So, Keep it sacred and keep it secret. 
Thank you very much. I want to stop now and give it back to the Ina Boho. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Sahar from the Ina Boho yeah. program. And I had a couple of questions for you that were posed within the Facebook, um, the Facebook chat. And one of the questions we had for you was from Milo, and he asked, what constellation indicates September? September, a hey, uh, the constellation, it starts over here from March, April, May, June, July, August. Over here, a hey, uh, September, the a hey, uh, it has seen sky, a it stands right, right there. Uh, it starts over here from March, April, May, June, July. Because it's going to be on the, almost on the western side, almost on the west side over here. It's going to be the, and the whole gun. The post right here is September. So right there is is Perfect. That was a good visualization. Um, Milo, you have another question asking about when is our session next week? There is no session next week. This is it right here. Okay. I signed the agreement to do this. Constellation, it's supposed to be only one hour, but we had to conclude this, so it was in two parts. Okay. And that was fantastic. I know so many people appreciated it. Um, Let's see, next one. And that was fantastic. So, so and Zam would like to know, will you be putting a book out? What? Would you be putting a book out? I don't know. I don't know how to write, remember? I don't know how to write. <laughs> I think we're always looking for ways to preserve your knowledge. So, yeah. And I really appreciate the time that you have taken. And um, if you have any last comments, you can feel free to chime in. In the meantime, uh, Thanks you all for uh, joining us at this info session. This is the best way that we can. Oh. I'd like to um, kind of like, if I was um, at a college or university or just um, wandering, I would think that I have a good question to, to study something is, in Navajo culture, wondering, you see, um, when a female does a kenalta, and they dress them with moccasin and the skirt, blouse, they even put jewelry and they put chiyesh and she will run and she will make all those things that is part of her development skill and all of that. Uh, so she has a a profile like that's a woman that's like the resemble changing woman and like is there there's something for a man when men when they go to ceremony they have their boots on tennis shoes on they have their jeans or their shirt button they don't have long hair they don't have to yes and what is the attire for a man, a Navajo man, to be identified to be a Navajo man? I would think that that would be like maybe a woman will answer that. 
And that would be a great I conversation know. topic have, for another uh, culture. I have a long right? hair. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I got my TS. I got my moccasin on and I, I go to ceremony like that and, and all that. So, that's all I want to say, ask. So, curiosity. And you bring up a very valid point, it's etiquette. Curiosity. Yep. <laughs> Shall we call it a night? I think I think we can call it a night, and um, and I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you for sharing that with us, and especially sharing that with our youth. I think having a person who's knowledgeable of traditional teachings who can toggle between. The Lagana Pazad, Otto, the Nepazad is together is a great way to tag team and kind of capture that audience. And um, anything else that we bring out from Enoch uh, Bohoa, any any of our programs and our events, we want to make sure that we always offer um, both cultural plus self-care, wellness, education, extended learning. So you totally fit that model. We appreciate you. Our program covers uh, the entire Utah Navajo region from the Utah Colorado border all the way to Navajo Mountain. We service uh, Montezuma Creek, Monument Valley, Navajo Mountain, and Blanding and all the communities in between. Do you have anybody that you know that you'd like to refer to our program between the ages of 16 uh, to 25? Please feel free to reach out through our uh, contact number that's available on our Facebook page. And thank you to brilliant thought leaders like Avery Denny Jahat. And um, also thanking our, um, our UNHS traditional counselor who couldn't be here this evening, Mr. Ernest Harry Begay. And yeah, have a very good night. Uh, take a look at those stars this evening and now you can gaze with wonderment because now you have a piece of knowledge that you can take with you forever. Bye bye, good and night. Have a good Valentine's Day. Have a good night, everybody. Oh yeah. <laughs>